Yeah, and the rest are just pretty much credits. You know what? That's cool. That's cool and everything. We can look at them later. There's even a button to look at the credits. Hi, I'm Moniker Fox here to play one of my favorite games ever, and I'd say it's influential in a number of ways, but this is an old game from about 1995. It's called Buried in Time. It is The Journeyman Project A2, and it's kind of in the same vein as Myst, but you'll see that when we get into it. I kind of been having, uh, I don't know, a tough week here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play through this, and I'm just going to play through it straight. It's going to be cool, and you're going to enjoy it. It's very atmospheric. They really advise you to just sit back, put on some headphones, turn off the lights. Maybe not sit back, but, you know, get into it with that stuff, and I highly recommend it. I've got my headphones on, the lights are off, got some ambient light. Let's do it. You'll see what's going on here. has been officially admitted into the symbiotry of peaceful beings. Gratitude, but I honor you, Gage Blackwood, with the Paragon Medal for Valorous Service. At the conference this morning, the government admitted the existence of the Temporal Security Agency, an organization... Okay, that's us, by the way. Quick, there's not much time to explain. They'll be here any second. Yes, I am you. I've come from the future. I, you, we've been framed. Now whatever you try to do, do not interfere with what's about to happen. The suit I'm gonna transfer over to you will keep you close, so just stand still and watch. When it's all over, you'll be pulled 10 years forward in the future to my present. From there out, it's all up to you. Oh, and I've hidden more information inside of you. You'll figure out what I mean. Here comes the jumpsuit. Disregard that we kind of look like we're working on a bodega or a deli of some kind with these suspenders we got going on, or this apron thing, but otherwise, you know, we're, we're cool, we're cool. Come on, Gage, let's go. here we are this is we're in the game now this is the game like there's no moving around with your mouse really there's just this kind of I guess you can use the the arrow keys but this is the game it's like missed it's point and click you can kind of go forward and all that I'm just gonna use the mouse yeah, kind of, let me we'll figure it out but I just something about the feel of this game is just amazing I think and so this is our apartment. If you haven't figured it out, we are a time traveler, we're part of a time traveling kind of th force, right? Half of it is research and half of it is peacekeeping, and we're part of the research aspect of it. I'm just going to kind of walk around the apartment a little bit here. You can go around, you can kind of click on things, see what's going on. You can, some, some things you can touch. You can explore around a little bit here. We can do some of this stuff here, but this is his apartment, and there's only so many <laughs> different angles you can go on, but for 1995, this is pretty incredible. I mean, this these graphics were, were nuts at the time. They're pretty great. But, so as you saw, something was going down, right? We woke up, and then we, from the future, showed up, gave ourselves this suit, kicked us off, 10 years into the future to where we are now, which is, of course, 2328. If anybody's watching this from 2328, well, man, if it's like this, that'd be pretty cool. But that's all we really know. That's all we know what's going on. Somebody from our own place decided to come and bring us to the future. 
That was the guy that zapped us, right? This is just kind of a little shop at home sort of thing. And that's kind of what's going on. So I'm just going to spill coffee and suck it back into my no-spill cup. And that's, that's really all we've got going on right now. But the thing is, since this is like mist, is there's so much to explore. And a lot of this game is just doing that. But we're going to pretty much, like I said, walk right through it. And I encourage you to play it for yourself. It's $5 on good old games. But let's get into it. I'm going to walk around the apartment a little bit, like I said, so you can kind of get an idea of what this place is like. I forget where we're at. I think we're in Colorado. Colorado. Got our desk over here. This is our entertainment center. What's cool is if you go in here... When it's all, it's all clear, right? It's all see-through, whatever. But when you go in... Oh, wait, that's not it. This is the entertainment center. What the fuck am I talking about? This is just... This is just uh, a sitting area. That's all. <laughs> this is the entertainment center. So, this is the apartment. Desk and stuff over here. Oh, let's go and check that out, huh? Before we go any further... What do you always do before you leave the house? Number one thing in the 90s, and apparently in the 2300s, what do you do? Well, check your voicemail. This is our answering machine over here. So let's go and look at this. You have three messages. Isn't that creepy? Mr. Blackwood, this is Mark Johnson from Interactive News Network. I'm just calling to see if you'd like a chance to tell your side of the story. Give me a call at Sector 10, 569-82227, and we'll talk about setting up an exclusive interview. I hope to hear from you soon. Yeah, I shape my face. If I mentioned it, but I unironically love the acting in this game, and I think that's what was influential to me about this. Is for some reason the acting just sticks with me. Gage, it's me. Wake up and answer the phone. Hello. I know you're there. Where else could you be? Well, anyway, you owe me, pal. I got your jumpsuit. I just pray they don't realize their key evidence is missing before you figured out what's going on. Or we'll both be in neck deep. I mean, it would take a genius to figure out that I was the only one who could have taken it. But hey, they wouldn't fire me, would they? I'm their chief technician. Who else do they have to get their net games running? I'll send you this suit as soon as I put it in an Opmin biochip. If you get a chance, you'll want to modify it to automatically record evidence. And uh, if you need anything else, please, hesitate to call me. Oh, Engage, do me a favor. Erase your messages for a change. Thanks. Good luck, buddy. That guy has a problem with eye contact. It's like half and half. <laughs> so we had three messages, right, as that was going on. I think that was... Yep. So let's go back. So that's kind of what we do with that. I don't know what that sound was. Agent 5, Gage Blackwood, is under house arrest. So we are Agent 5, if you haven't caught on to that, so we are under house arrest. Why? I don't know. There's a whole bunch of different things, of course, that we can check out. Take 3, because I don't know how to use this freaking game. You have to go in the middle to scroll down. Alright, I'm going to read these because you want to get involved and you want to get intrigued, so from here on out, I'm going to read all this shiz. Here we go, we're Gage Blackwood, and this is from the future. Like I said, we're in 2328, and this is from 2329. 
Here's what he has to say. Here's what we have to say. For the past few jumps, I've been experiencing a vague, dizzy sort of feeling when I time travel. It's... It's almost like something hovering just beyond the reach of my consciousness, like a word on the tip of my tongue. And then the feeling goes away as soon as I get to where I'm going. I've never heard of anyone experiencing this before, so I'm afraid that I might be developing some new kind of time travel disease, or maybe a sensitivity to it. Not that I'm surprised. No one's ever proven that time travel is entirely safe. <laughs> We're the guinea pigs. Well, whatever it is, I can only hope it doesn't get any worse. If it does, I'll have to let Shellman know. Kelman? Shellman? This is also from the future. I don't understand it. The coordinates of the station were supposed to be accurate to within a millimeter. But somehow, I just ended up floating in space where the station had been about an hour earlier. Unless the location and velocity data were wrong, I don't know how it could have been so badly miscalculated. They said they took everything into account down to the most negligible effects on its velocity by any bodies within a thousand light years of it. I could see the station drifting out there, but I couldn't get to it. The suit doesn't have any kind of thrusters. Hmm. TSA protocol says to scrap a mission if something unpredictable happens, but this is obviously just an error in calculation. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to find a way to get to the station. But if I go into the TSA looking for a thruster, someone might wonder what's up. So it looks like I'll have to get creative. I came up with a pretty cheesy idea for propelling myself to the space station. <laughs> I still can't believe it actually worked. Not that it matters. <sighs> Where did you go? Even after getting in, I kept running into barriers. No oxygen, no gravity, jammed doors. And here's the kicker. I heard a voice. There shouldn't have been anyone there. Whoever it was saw me and told me to get off the station. Actually, I'm not sure he saw me so much as detected my presence. But still, I had no choice. I had to abort. It's a miracle I didn't cause a ripple. Maybe because whoever it was died up there before coming into contact with another human being. But I can't help but think. What if it was Farnstein? Did he live longer than we believe? The station was obliterated. How could he have survived? Or could the stories be true? Might it have been an artificial life form that he created? <laughs> I can't escape the irony. I went there to learn the truth, but the truth is what forced me away. Maybe this is a sign that some things are meant to remain unknown. And this is still another mission yet. These are, you'll see, but these are from different locations. So the third note here, the third log is from a third location and it'll make sense. I don't know about my luck these days. It happened again. When I got to, this is like, it's French. It's like Chateau Gad or something like that. There was someone standing right in front of me looking out over the tower wall. He spun around the second he heard the displacement effect. There wasn't a thing I could do. But before he could even draw his sword, an arrow came over the wall and hit him in the back. Lucky for me, I guess. He would have killed me. Can you imagine the distortion that would have caused? It should have created a huge one as it was. I guess we're just damn lucky and the arrow would have hit him anyway. I don't get it. The jump locations are supposed to be scanned with a fine-toothed comb. How could they have not noticed? I'd like to hear their explanation for this one. And then... And then I go to watch Philippe, Philippe Augustus's men climbing up to the guard robe. And when I get there, all I see is the grappling hook they left behind. The whole reason I was sent there was to document how the castle fell. And they got me there too late for it. I know it's difficult to distill accurate information from historical accounts, but this is twice in as many missions. This is twice in as as many... I guess that makes sense. I guess I'm going to have to have a little talk with the guys in research before I end up materializing in the middle of a Shriners convention. <laughs> to show up, they like start pulling 360s and donuts and stuff around your suit. This is what our jumpsuit looks like, in case that isn't obvious, but it is. Right? Right? On my last jump, the strange feeling that I've been experiencing during time travel became a little more tangible. I became aware of a faint, almost imperceptible ghost image of my jumpsuit floating slightly out of phase with myself. I'm assuming it's a glitch in the suit's circuitry. The time phase synchronizer is probably malfunctioning. That should worry me, but I'm actually relieved. At least now I know there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to have Bill run a diagnostic on my suit tomorrow. 
that's all we got. I also don't know how to get back out of it. No, I don't want to quit. There we go. So those are some notes that we had from our, our stuff going on. Also, I'm going to poke this because that's what we do. We poke things. What I like about this game and what I like about Myst is it doesn't tell you what's all going on right off the bat. It's up to you to figure out what is kind of happening, piece it together, find the pieces that you're missing as you go, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So without further ado, here's kind of... this will tell us a bit more, right? If you played Journeyman Project 1, which has been re-released as the Pegasus Project, which I've been trying to play through on my own, these are some of the, the things you fight in the first one, and now he has action figures of them because of course he does. Click. I had to take a drink of water. I'm really thirsty. It's really hot here, too. I'm gonna come back from the right here. Uh huh. So these were robots of a guy named Elliot Sinclair, which I think is just one of the coolest villain names ever for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. Yeah, watch out, he'll chirp at you. Now, here's the part that's going to tell us what's kind of going on. It's an action figure of... ourself. Since you're getting this message, I'm assuming everything went well. Now, before you do anything, you need to understand that the role of the TSA has changed in recent years. In addition to the security unit, there's now another team whose job it is to research history. That's the team I was on. That is, until someone altered history at four of my research mission locations. They weren't major changes, just enough to create temporal ripples. When another agent discovered the temporal ripples about a week ago, I was suspended and put on house arrest. Then they discovered some evidence, and by the next day I was already on trial. I had just about given up hope last night when it hit me. I'm being watched, but you can still prove that we're innocent. So I've decided to break house arrest, and jump back in time to get your help. Right now, I'm probably in jail. If they know where I am, they won't be looking for me. You'll be free to jump to any of my research mission locations to see what's going on. Now pay attention. This is important. Go to each of the four time zones, and gather as many clues as you can find. Try and discover what's been changed and how. I've programmed the jumpsuit to auto-record any evidence you might find. Oh, and one more thing. I don't know if this has anything to do with what's going on, but I was at the TSA a couple weeks ago, doing an unscheduled check of the security grid. I noticed something was wrong. It seems a couple of the feedback jumpers had gotten crossed. A good portion of the security grid was compromised for... I don't know how long. Anyone with the right information could have gotten into or out of the TSA, the Pegasus Warehouse, or any of the restricted areas without even being seen. I'm still not sure why I'm being set up, but I think this might have something to do with it. Be careful. Our life is on the line. <laughs> yeah, and that's where I'm going to end the first episode. This is just kind of a taste to show you what's going on, but in the next one we're going to actually start going to different places because... Each location, mission location he's talking about is a different location in time. And you can cruise around different places in the jump menu here, and we'll talk about that in the next one. It gets good. It gets real good, and I really like this game. So I hope you join me for episode two. We'll see you then. I'm going to have some rip beer.